The story is all about ChatGPT versus Gemini. What is going to happen? Bear in mind, it was in November 2022 when ChatGPT was launched. By January, it went on to become the fastest growing platform with over 100 million users and $29 billion in valuation for OpenAI. Now, by Jan 2023, that was. Now we're in December 2023, and Google has come up with a rival called Gemini. The words that are being used to describe Gemini are human-like, extremely advanced. It comes in three versions, Pro, Ultra, and Nano. Pro is already available on Google's Bard platform. Ultra will be launched early next year, and Nano very soon. So will Gemini be a true competitor to ChatGPT, considering the growth of ChatGPT, and considering the pace of growth of ChatGPT? We have Mr. R. Sridharan, Editor International of uh, TV9's News9 was joining us in the studio. We also have Mr. Nikhil Pava, founder of Media Nama, also joining us live on the broadcast. Nikhil, as always, pleasure uh, having you. I'm going to begin with a quick chat with uh, Shri about this. Shri, I mean, come on, we've, we've seen the, the scorching pace at which AI and generative AI, specifically speaking, LLMs, large language models, specifically speaking, <coughs> the pace at which the growth is there. This is no less than Google rivaling ChatGPT. Where are your bets? So this has been a race between uh, Google and OpenAI ever since the small startup with 800 people, you know, suddenly overtook uh, Google, uh, which has been calling itself an AI company for almost a decade now. And suddenly they put out ChatGPT and looked like Google was losing the race. So this is Sundar Pichai and team coming back at OpenAI with what I think is a much more powerful product. Google says it's their most powerful AI yet. And I think this is possibly the most powerful AI model out in the market yet uh, compared to even GPT-4, which is uh, you know OpenAI's uh, latest uh, um, generative model. Um, so what is different about this, Krishna, is that this is multimodal. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, ChatGPT or GPT-4, uh, they have verticals that they employ. For example, there's an AI which is like audio, then AI that's doing uh, text, and AI that's doing video. So Google, from the word go, has built a model which is multimodal. So, uh, you know, Gemini can read text, it can read video, it can read audio, it can even read code. So this is a phenomenal improvement which, uh, you know, Google has come back with in a bit to get ahead <laughs> of OpenAI. Fair enough. Better than ahead of are the words that are being used. And because, uh, uh, Nikhil, if I were to ask you, uh, the, the, the skills at which it's supposedly better than ChatGPT4 even are summarizing, reasoning, coding, you know, interesting categories under which it's outperforming ChatGPT4, would you say? Um, and, and I think these are all critical categories, especially with coding, because coders across the world have already started using, uh, especially Microsoft's Copilot, uh, you know, and ChatGPT for writing code. Uh, what you're also seeing is that a lot of web uh, web development is going to start getting automated. Um, and so, you know, uh, there was an initial thought that AI is going to replace more of the uh, physical labor, the more, you know, uh, more mundane tasks first. But it looks like, and Sam Altman said this, it looks like it's replacing the more creative tasks first. Uh, the other thing to uh, look at, KK, is that Nano is going to be the real um, uh, impactful app over here because it's going to be integrated on device. Um, and so, you know, uh, like it's starting out with like an auto summarization feature in the recorder, but in the keyboard, it's also going to be integrated as more and more services get, uh, AI services from Google get integrated into existing Google products um it it has a it has a multiplier effect not only will the products improve faster because of usage it will also mean that more of google's products will start getting used uh, ai products will start getting used because they're already integrated into google apps directly right, right. so uh, i think google has that advantage in terms of the scale of uses that it can bring in um you know uh, to, to, right. uh, and, and the Nikhil, data that, simple word is captive audience. Captive yeah. audience. I mean, so Google the, starts out the captive so audience. The simplest doesn't it? thing, the I think, uh, Krishna, what our viewers need to understand is that this is the first AI model which has proved to be smarter than an expert human. Okay, <laughs> on all these SOTA tests, so-called SOTA tests, which is state-of-the-art tests, include like MMLU, uh, Triple MU, all these tests. The Google Gemini has scored much higher 
than human human experts. <laughs> so now these are all very complex things. For example, uh, you know, if you take the triple MU, which is a massive, multidisciplinary, multimodal understanding, uh, which actually requires you to have a college level understanding and deliberative reasoning. Uh, even here, Gemini has scored much better than uh, human experts. So this is a totally different direction in which uh, Google has taken AI. And as Nikhil mentioned, uh, given that Google is a, is a large tech company with actual products out there, you mentioned about Nano, so Nano is now going to be integrated with their, uh, you know, uh, phones. Um, and then, so we can think of Ultra Pro and Nano as basically the Ultra, the, uh, the three enterprise different iPhones. level. <laughs> the, the enterprise level, uh, a pro is going to be for the professionals, hardcore professionals, right. and nano for people like you and me who yeah. are like, you know, going to need it anyway. So I think this is a huge uh, uh, a leap which uh, Google has taken. Right. Uh, and for the moment, I think it's ahead of uh, OpenAI. Okay, Nikhil, uh, you wanted to comment on the, it. Yeah, the other thing it does is it makes Microsoft all the more important for OpenAI uh, because it is on users of open, OpenAI products on Microsoft services that OpenAI is now going to start developing and improving. Um, yeah, yeah. And so especially let's... now after all that's gone down recently, isn't it, Nikhil? <laughs> Not just that, but 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 it's it's just that that, that symbiotic relationship. Yeah. OpenAI is important for Microsoft, and Microsoft is now increasingly more important for OpenAI. Something that we we'll have to keep in mind. Uh, I'm not sure where this leaves Facebook's llama. To be honest, <laughs> um, I know they're trying to increase usage and deployment. Uh, by open sourcing certain parts of it, um, but you know this is a race, and uh, Google has uh, has come back in a big way, and Google and OpenAI have a head start uh, right now. Okay, head start. Well, I think that just changed yesterday with uh, Gemini because I'm, I'm a big believer in what Google's done now. Fair enough. But my question here is, uh, both of you are agreeing on the fact that the head start, uh, the head, <coughs> OpenAI has the, had the head start, but definitely yes. Google has probably arrived with the better product Very strongly later. from behind. Yeah. My question here is that if I were to do a like to like comparison the pace of growth of from chat gpt to, it has actually exactly two two uh, models which is 3.5 and 4 right. we went from chat gpt to, uh, to chat gpt 4 in a matter of 5 months and in that 5 months it already went on to be the most downloaded right. platform yes. with 30 nearly 30 billion dollars in valuation so which means the clock is ticking on Gemini and the pace at which Gemini's adoption will take place, isn't it, Sri? Absolutely. Uh, so which is why on the on the bar chat, it's already been integrated. So you can start using it from today. Now, uh, I want people to understand what the capability of this really is, Krishna. Um, let me just give you two small examples that Google itself has talked about. One is, you know, their scientists were working on uh, Gemini. They asked their model to go through 200,000 scientific papers and f you know, filter out the most relevant uh, papers for a specific topic uh, and, and do it in a couple of hours. So this Gemini system, you know, during a lunch break, you know, merrily went through some 200,000 papers, shortlisted the relevant papers, 250, and gave these researchers a summary of you know, just those 250 papers. So right. if a human were to do it, Krishna, it would take them 274 years, even if you read two papers a day. Okay, so that's the speed at which it just burned through all these, uh, you know, research papers. Now, the other thing, Krishna, it, it, the fact that Gemini is multimodal, it's integrating, uh, you know, audio, video, and, and text, and also code. Uh, you know, what happens now is that, let's say you're, you know, like, for example, my son, he does homework. Um, you know, I can actually uh, use uh, Gemini, his handwritten homework can be scanned, uploaded, It'll read his handwriting, it'll, it'll look at the you know, solution that he sent, tell him whether he's right or wrong, and if he's wrong, also tell him how he should have done it. So we are looking at, we are the cusp of something truly transformational because the AI, uh, uh, the f race, which has you know, been going on for a while now, is now at a totally new level. This is going to be the age of uh, artificial general in, uh, uh, you know, intelligence, AGI, and I think this is the starting. What we're seeing with the Gemini is the beginning of AGI. The beginning of AGI, uh, fascinating, isn't it? In that sense, is it uh, you know 2.0 AI 2.0 in that sense? Because we've seen a burst of this right through from the end of 2022 to uh, up you're, until the end of 2023. You're going to keep no, KK. You're going to keep seeing bursts from here on because <laughs> really because because technology growth happens geometrically, uh, especially with with uh, with AI because it learns from the users. Right, and we've seen that in in the 2016, 17, 18, when Google first rolled out multilingual processing, where it wasn't just translating languages from English uh, to others, but languages from one to the other using English and then directly. 
-hmm. So uh, I think there's a there's a uh, you're going to see geometric progression because the more the deployment, the more the usage, uh, the more those, these models learn from usage, uh, the better it will become. Uh, will will become. I right. actually I I don't know what you're going to see. Let's say even a year from now. <laughs> uh, this has already blown us away. Right, yeah. exactly. Because again, uh, it took us a matter of months to get from ChatGPT three to ChatGPT four. So, Krishna, so. to Nikhil's point, we are already seeing what are called these emergent capabilities mm. in the AI systems, mm. where you haven't really taught uh, the AI model mm. a particular thing, but it learns on its own. Mm. 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 For example, yes. there's a case study on how an AI model learned a high school chemistry entirely on its own, although it was not even trained on that uh, kind of text. Mm. So these are like, you know, interesting times, that, which is why I think there are a lot of risks also associated with uh, AI and AGI. Uh, and, and I think there's a need for Google, OpenAI, uh, Meta, all these people to uh, come out and talk about what their trading models are about and, and how are their systems behaving. Mm. Because don't forget, there's already uh, uh, an executive order in the US from the President of the United States, which says that they have to, uh, you know, any new system that is launched, uh, they must uh, submit the reports uh, to the government on, on if there are any issues they're facing and what are the test results they're getting. So right. I think the safety of AI is going to be a very, very big, uh, you know, uh, issue as we, uh, you know, while this race continues, uh, safety is going to become a very, very important concern. Yeah, be it a chemistry teacher's job or a child's homework, if uh, AI is going to threaten everything from that, from the teacher's job to the students, uh, you know, own ability to do the, the work on their and the own. the researchers, don't forget the researchers. <laughs> and all the, all the all important human researchers around. Nikhil, uh, my question here is that as we encounter every single burst of this uh, in, in, in the AI universe, the questions will always go back to ethics and how are we going to make sure that this is regulated? So we have two modes of regulation that are being discussed right now. One is in the US, the executive order takes a fairly light touch approach, pushing for transparency and accountability. And then we have a hard approach that the EU has taken. What's interesting is in the last week alone, uh, three European Union uh, governments have, have, have written to the EU uh, saying that there needs to be a lighter touch approach. You can't do hard regulation right now. And so while the world may need more checks and balances in place, countries also realize that harder regulations might actually hinder development. Um, also, the more complex the processing becomes, the more difficult it will become to identify hallucinations, which are basically mistakes that the AI makes or things that it con concocts. You know, in the US, you've already seen... It's happening with Gemini also. All right. You're so, no, just to Nikhil's point, uh, Krishna, he mentioned about EU and US. So now the thing with EU is that it has made regulations very specific to generative AI. Mm. Uh, whereas the US is looking at AI from the point of view of impact on customers, uh, from the consumers. Impact on society. On, on consumers, basically. Right. Uh, so I think that's a smarter approach to my mind because no matter what the technology is, if the impact of that technology on you is going to be adverse, then there's a need to regulate it. Rather than saying that, okay, this regulation is only for generative AI. What happens if something <laughs> different comes in tomorrow, right? So then is your regulation going to become uh, redundant? You need to update it. I think the better, smarter thing to do is to look at how does this technology actually impact human beings, the consumers, and what do we need to do to protect them? Right, and this even as we await our own regulation here in India, for uh, uh, regulations on AI, considering all the talk about deep fakes uh, these days, isn't it, Nikhil? I mean, like I keep saying, this is going to be India's deep fake, deep fake elections. Um, and the government's frankly doing the right thing in terms of looking at regulating. But how it regulates deep fakes is going to be tricky. Um, identification of deep fakes is extremely complicated. Um, if, and, and platforms at scale will find it impossible to deal with deep fakes. Because, you know, even if you change, let's say, half a second in a video, the hash value it generates which I, uh, is, is going to be different. So you're going to find that it's going to become uh, extremely tricky for platforms across the board and for regulators across the board to figure out how do you deal with deep fakes. Right. So, so one way which I think one idea which has been floated in the US by some of these AI experts is that you have some sort of a digital stamp hmm. uh, on approved it, content. It doesn't like, work. Like you have, no, it'll work, uh, you know, especially if, you, if the government is a user, then you can look for the digital stamp and then choose not to you know take the non stamp uh, you know uh, information seriously right 
So it's possible to, these are early solutions. Obviously, Nikhil, uh, I don't think anyone has the, uh, you know, uh, exact answer to how deep fakes are going to be there. available. But, but there's some there is thought already process. There's tech which available is, for removing it. There's already tech available for removing watermarks. Every time you, you try watermarking. No, no, I'm saying that the US government is considering using watermarks for its own content, digital stamp. And this is from the, the gentleman who co-wrote their Bill of Rights. Right. AI. Yeah. And, and, I guess and, these and, are... and those watermarks can also be replicated and put into other content as well. Fair enough. These this, are early days. Solution. Solutions are, are, are yet to come. We're still arriving at what exactly is the problem to start with. Deepfakes is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the problems associated with what AI and how AI can impact society. So these debates were, are going to continue. And that's the reason why we're asking those questions on a day of a launch of something as big as Google's own uh, generative AI platform, better than ChatGPT4, which is called Gemini. Nikhil, as always, Pleasure having you enlighten us every single time uh, here on the show and hope to keep having you on the show. And Sri, thank you so much for taking time out uh, from your busy schedule to be with us here on this edition of Business Plus.